the purpose of this video is to go over the long article. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to read the title of any article. This is, um, I'm going to give you some advice on how to go through research articles very quickly. So I expect you to read articles in, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes um, for the first time that you read it, just to get a, a broad overview. And so the first thing you do is you look at the title of the article. And as you click on these yellow boxes, up will pop my notes here, and that will help you go through the article. It will ask you questions, it will give you information. So the first thing that we notice from the title is we can identify three things. We can identify the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the population. The independent variable, the or IV, or intervention in this case is cognitive behavioral therapy. So this author believes that cognitive behavioral therapy can solve some problem. Uh, for this particular article, anxiety is the DV or the dependent variable. So they believe that cognitive behavioral therapy could fix or improve anxiety in whom? In Hong Kong adolescents. That is the population. Um, so in the and then you can see other videos that go over sort of the introduction of this um, research article. But you know, this here is the abstract as so titled. Then you come to the problem statement or the introduction. Then they go into the literature review. In this case, the literature review reviews cognitive behavioral therapy and all the populations it's worked with. And then it specifically, the literature review goes over how has CBT um, been used with the Chinese populations, right? CBT has been used in America quite frequently, but not necessarily around the world. And so they review that literature and go over it. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here until I get to the methods section. Um, and I'm going to start here actually in the last paragraph really of Wong's lit review. Um, and, and what he is talking about here is how is their CBT intervention going to look. And so they talk about who's included, how is it modified, it's going to be a group format, and you know there's some other information there. So in your method section for the 430 class, you want to talk about um, this information. How is your intervention going to look? But the method section um, also for your paper discusses what the objective of the study is. Watch the other videos that talk about how to write objective statements. You are also going to write hypotheses, and here he gives three examples of what his hypotheses are, and you're going to write research questions. And so, again, watch the videos where it talks about how to write an objective, a hypothesis, and a research question. But he titles methods starting here. For, uh, for your paper, methods will be before the objectives and the hypothesis, um, but nonetheless, his, objectives, or his method section uh, discusses participants. Who were the participants? For you, who would you like the participants to be? He goes over the inclusion criteria or the exclusion criteria. They also talk about recruitment. How were the participants recruited to participate in the study? People are not sitting around waiting for you to ask them to participate in a study. You have to recruit them to be involved. So how are you going to do that? Um, and then they talk about who, how many people agreed to participate, and they have two groups here listed. They have 26 participants in the experimental group and 20 in the control group. I would recommend that you have 50 in the experimental group and 50 in the control group, and they're also telling you about the design here because how the fact that we have a control group and an experimental group tells us about whether this design is going to be pre-experimental, quasi-experimental, or full experimental. Um, one other question you want to figure out is were the participants randomized? Were they randomized? Um, and here, right here it answers that question. Um, were the participants randomized? And that will tell us about the design. So they're discussing the de design even though they didn't say design here in this paragraph. The other thing that's really important is the measurement section. So the measurement section is going to be the scale or assessment tool or survey or questionnaire. They're all names for the same thing, um, broadly called measurements. 
So measurements are basically a series of questions that ask questions about a particular topic. Um, and, and we can think of this as the DV. So if we're looking at this measurement tool here, the Spence Children's Anxiety Scale, that is questions about anxiety. So they might ask questions about panic or obsessive compulsive disorder or fear or physical injury or any of these things, right, um, to assess uh, whether a person has anxiety or not. And they give you some really key information that you also want to include in your paper. How many items does the survey have? So researchers call them items, but you know, normal people call them questions. So how many questions does the scale have? And what is the response type of those questions? So how can people answer that question? Is it a true false question? Is it a Likert scale question? Is it an open answer question, right? Like you just write an essay or a short a short answer. In this case, it's a Likert scale, uh, and it's a four-point scale, meaning there's four options. Number one is never, um, and it's probably, you know, sometimes, most of the time, and then four is always. So that is a four-point Likert scale. Higher scores um, indicate more anxiety. That's a really important statement because if it was the opposite, we need to know if lower scores is, is more anxiety or less anxiety. So you need to answer that question. The other question you want to answer about your measurement tool is the Cronbox Alpha. So what is the Cronbox Alpha for your measurement tool? Part of what Cronbox Alpha does is it determines if the scale is valid or reliable. Um, and so that, that's in that category, and you should you know, watch the information about validity and reliability and how do you figure that out. We have a longer video on that, but one of those things is Cronbox Alpha. So you want to know what the score is. And so here the pretest is 90 and the post-test is 92, um, and also there's um, levels of scoring of which one is okay and which one's fabulous. And so anything 9.0 and over is a very good Cronbox Alpha score. Cronbox Alpha specifically measures the internal consistency of the measurement tool. So you want a measure that has high internal consistency. Okay, so then they have a diagram and then they have the demographics for the participants. They tell you, you know, how many women, how many men, um, and then grades and income of the family and all that stuff. So those are just demographics. So for you, you want to decide what are the 10 demographics that you are going to collect with your participants. I require um, uh, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, um, language, and then you come up with the other demographics and there's a whole range of demographics that you can ask your participants. Um, here they talk about what their score was on a different measurement tool. Um, here's more measurement tools that they go over. Then they talk about procedures. Now he uses the header of procedures, but really what they're talking about is they're talking about the IRB. So for your study, your, your header here is going to be the IRB and informed consent. And what they're saying is, did you inform the participants? Did you consent the participants after they were informed and they agreed to consent to the study or to agree to participate in the study? And what was the IRB that approved your study? For the Wong article, it was the Ethics Committee for the City University of Hong Kong. For you, it's going to be the Millersville University IRB. They also talked about how did you collect the data? So how did you actually get the data from the participants? When did you do it? Where did you do it? Uh, for how long did you do it? They talk about treatment fidelity, which you don't have to worry about, but it is really important in general. How do we know that we did the intervention correctly, right? So let's say we do this study and folks still have anxiety at the end. Well, maybe the problem isn't that CBT doesn't fix anxiety. Maybe the problem is we just didn't do CBT correctly. And that's really what treatment fidelity is. How do we make sure that it's right? Data analysis is the math or the statistics that you use to figure out if you made a difference in people's lives. It, it's essential. You can't, you can't figure that out without the math. You do not have to deal with any data analysis or math in the 430 research class or the 322 
uh, evidence-based literature class. You only have to deal with data analysis in the 431 statistics class. That's the only place that you're going to do math. The rest of it is other stuff that we're doing. Um, the ending is the results. So they tell you what the results of the data analysis was. Part of the results, they talk about mean and standard deviation. Again, that's, that is what you are going to do in the 431 research, uh, excuse me, 431 statistics class. You're going to talk about descriptive statistics. You're going to come up with a table like this. Um, finally, they talk about a discussion and application to practice. So right off the bat here, I can tell that they are going to talk about the implications for practice. So that is part of what they're talking about. Implication sections. Um, talk about a few different things. Practice implications is one of them, and, and that's what they do here in this article. And that is the Wong article. Oh, they also talk about study limitations, so that's also something that's going to be important. Um, and then finally, um, they have the reference list, and you can see when you're confused about how to do APA references, just look at a published research article. How did they do it? And you can see sort of the format, and you should just copy that format.